According to Goodreads, I have now read 245 either fantasy, sci-fi or horror books and I was looking through the list and I could only find 20 books I have ever given a perfect 5 out of 5 star rating or it might be 21. So in today's video, I am going to talk about those 21 books I have given a perfect 5 out of 5 star rating and obviously giving a book a 5 star rating is subjective and I know a lot of these books I'm going to mention do have some flaws but usually when I give a book 5 out of 5 stars it just means that it just spoke to me on a different level or just was really able to make me feel connected to the world or the story. Okay without further ado let's start with the first book I've given 5 out of 5 stars. Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. No I'm obviously joking here. <laughs> Oh, and also, this is going to be a long video, so make yourself a cup of coffee or tea and come and hang out with me. Okay, the first book I've given 5 out of 5 stars is a book that I recently finished, and this literally, I read it in 24 hours because it was so ridiculously addictive, and that is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. This book literally consumed me, and I know that this is not like hard sci-fi, but this is the kind of sci-fi I can get behind. So this is basically a sci-fi thriller, I think, and it's basically set in our world, so I think the year is like 20, 2019 or something like that. So it's not super futuristic, but what Blake Crouch does so ridiculously well is to keep the pacing absolutely ruthless throughout the whole book. I mean, literally almost from the first page you start reading, there's just so much intrigue, the writing style is accessible, and also I noticed a minor thing. I mean, there aren't that many words on each page, so you're literally flipping through the pages so fast. And Blake Crouch just does a phenomenal job at explaining some like really complicated concept in this novel and making them accessible and then he puts some really fascinating twists on them. But what I just love so much about this is that yes, there is a really fascinating concept at the heart of this novel, but the characters or especially the protagonist, I mean, I just really, really fell for them. I really connected with him and those are really the sci-fi books I tend to connect with. Those that do have like an interesting concept, but really have like great characters at the heart. And this is also standalone. It's relatively short. I mean, it is a bit more than 300 pages, but as I showed you, most of the pages are relatively short and I can assure you if you read the first 50 pages I think maybe even for some of you 10 pages will be enough but if you read the first 50 pages you will probably read this in less than a day it is just crazy crazy addictive so definitely pick up Dark Matter now the second book I've given 5 out of 5 stars is Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb I had to include a Robin Hobb book here because no one writes character like Robin Hobb and I truly think that the Live Ship Traders trilogy because I've never read 9 books of her in the realm of the Elder Rings I think the Live Ship Traders trilogy is the best series I've come across so far and Ship of Magic, this is the first book, is truly, truly incredible. I mean, if you didn't connect with the Farseer trilogy, which is a very single POV, first person kind of story that analyzes this character called Fitz, then definitely still check out the Life Trader trilogy because this is a multiple POV epic fantasy and yes, it is nautical fantasy, which I know may be a turn off for some, but please, just give it a go. The character work in this series and in the Ship of Magic is just absolutely phenomenal. The world building is so intriguing and truly this series has some of the best characters I've ever come across. It is a slow burn but it is ever so worth it and I will argue that you can start with Ship of Magic so if you don't think the Farsi Trilogy sounds that interesting you can start with this one but after you have finished this series you have to go to the Farsi Trilogy but yeah it is truly a phenomenal read. Robin Hobb is the queen of fantasy for a reason. Don't miss out on Robin Hobb. Okay and the third book I've given 5 out of 5 stars is The Wall of Storms by Ken Liu. This book is absolutely <laughs> incredible. Now this is the second book in the Endline Dynasty and I've already made a dedicated spoiler free review about this book and I swear I've talked about this book a lot of times on my channel so far so I won't bore you with all the details if you already watched it but what I will say is that this book takes what was good in The Grace of Kings which is the first book and definitely it just improves upon it in every single aspect. The characterization is improved, there are more epic character moments, the world building is expanded even more, the pacing is better and we have more fantastical creatures and and it is just all brilliantly done. Now I recently finished book 3 in the series which is called The Whale Throne and that book was also an absolutely phenomenal read but out of the 3 books so far I read in the series The Wall of Storms is definitely the best book. It's just truly truly a masterpiece. Now, if you want to hear my full thoughts on the series then I've done a spoiler review for both Grace of Kings and The Wall of Storms. So I just recommend checking that out. 
Now, does hearing about all of these books make you feel like there are just too many exciting books to read? Do you wish you could read all of them faster than you do? Well, there may be a way for you to do that, which leads me to today's sponsor, Skillshare. Now, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members and is truly a place to get inspired, learn new skills and put them into work in impactful ways. Now, really what makes Skillshare so unique is the fact that it has the largest online learning community for creatives and with a massive depth and breadth covering topics such as illustrations, graphic design, marketing, and it also has a creative career focus and even having creative career focus classes, which can help you in marketing, freelancing, or social media, and so much more, there is truly something for everyone. And it also has a learn by doing approach to teaching, which I really appreciate. Now, one class that has helped me understand the basics of speed reading was the Speed Reading Mastery W Reading Speed and Seven Day Course by Jordan Harry. Now, this course only takes around four hours to complete and it gave me some really great advice on how I could implement some simple things into how I read to help me read faster and better, so I would highly recommend it. Now there is a link in the description down below where the first 1000 people that use the link will get one month free trial of Skillshare, so please go and check it out. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the video. And the fourth book I've given five out of five stars was actually my favorite read of last year, and that was The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. So I've also made a full spoiler review for this one if you're interested, but this book is just so good. If you're a fan of a group of misfits coming together to try and pull off the impossible, I mean, there's a clear heist element here. If you're a fan of an underdog, if you're a fan of really brilliant writing, and if you enjoy like politics in your novel, then this is the book for you. Now, this is part of a series, but I would say that you can very much read this book as a standalone. It is just so good. I mean, I loved everything about this novel. And I think most of you have probably heard so much about this novel because this is a ridiculously popular fantasy book, but really, it is worth the hype, especially as I said, if you love that kind of story where a group of misfits try to pull off the impossible. It is just so brilliant and I would definitely recommend it. All right, and the fifth book I've given five out of five stars is Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson, book two in the Stormlight Archive. And I think most of you have probably read this book by now because the Stormlight Archive is so ridiculously popular on book two but I really enjoyed Way of Kings, which is book one, but I must say, Words of Radiance took, again, everything that was good with the first book and just improved upon it. There are very few books, if any books I've ever come across in fantasy, that has this amount of epic and satisfying moments in a single book. Now, obviously, this book is huge because it's literally split into two volumes, but it is just so, so good. And I think that this book really benefits from you having read Way of Kings and you started to connect with the characters. And then when you start this book, you really feel attached to them. So Sanderson obviously didn't have to do that much groundwork to feel connected to the characters. But I must just say that the world building is on a whole another level. I mean, I am a huge fan of the Mistborn trilogy, but this is just more epic in scale. The characters are fleshed out more and the pacing is just spot on. I mean, this is like 1200 pages of pure epic goodness. So if you haven't picked up the Stormlight Archive yet, definitely do that now. The Way of Kings, as I said, is also a masterpiece, but truly, Words of Radiance just takes everything that was good in that book and just improves upon it. This book is truly, truly incredible. Now, the sixth book I've given a perfect 5 out of 5 star is The Tyranny of Faith by Richard Swan. Now, this is book 2 in the Emperor of the Wolves trilogy, and I debated if I should include the first book or the second book in my rating, but ultimately, I decided to choose this book because I just love, love the the direction Richard Swan is taking the story in this book. I mean, book one is a brilliant legal political fantasy thriller almost, and this one also has a lot of the same things, but I must say the final act in this book is just, it's so dark and the fantastical elements are really heightened, and I just think that the characterization, especially of the main character, Wonwald, is just so, so brilliant. I mean, this is truly a unique and modern fantasy, so if you're looking for something different, then this is the series for you. Now, I do have a criticism for this book, and that is that there's a big chunk in the first half 
half of this book that feels almost like a unnecessary side quest but I will say that Richard Swan he added this seemingly unnecessary side quest for a reason because it all just comes together in the final act and I read the last 200 pages in one sitting because I was that hooked to the story and the stakes are just increasingly raised and raised and everything just hits the fan in the last act so truly one of the most memorable climaxes I've come across and especially considering that this is book two there's definitely no middle book syndrome here and the seventh book I've given a perfect five out of five star rating is Pyronese by Susanna Clarke now I've talked about this novel so often so I'll keep it brief but what I'll say is so unique about this novel is that I will think that most people that don't enjoy fantasy would still enjoy this book because the fantastical elements are are handled in a way that makes you almost wonder if it's actually fantastical or if it's more psychological or not but I would just say that this is a novel that you want to go blind into it the less you know about the story the better it is but I'll say it's 200 pages only you can read it very very quickly it is absolutely weird it's mysterious it's very intriguing it's very atmospheric and it deals with some themes very very beautifully so since I think you will benefit from knowing very little I won't say more about it except that you should definitely read Pyronese by Susanna Clarke the next book I've given a perfect 5 out of 5 star rating is a book that I think most people probably gave 4 or 4.5 but for me it just worked perfectly and that is The Hunger of the Gods by John Gwynn now this is book 2 in the Bloodstorm Saga and I know that most people seem to enjoy the first book more but in my opinion this is John Gwynn's potentially finest work to date I love the first book in the series because it was just absolutely epic the Norse inspired fantastical setting just worked so well for me but what I just love love so much about this one is firstly this book has quite a lot of slow moments which I really really appreciate because John Gwynn he is known for having absolutely ruthless pacing where you can barely catch your breath but here he definitely intentionally slows down the pacing the second thing I love about this one is that this book introduces two new POVs and it's actually POVs from the enemy side so we really get insights into this bigger conflict from the other people's point of view which I really appreciate and it just really made the conflict feel so much more real and thirdly I think that John Gwynn does a fantastical job here at fleshing out the characters even more truly if John Gwynn is able to nail the ending in this series then this will truly be one of the best series I've ever read so it's definitely worth reading if you're looking for an epic fantasy that is Norse inspired has scheming gods that are scary and has some really badass characters <laughs> now the next book I've given a perfect 5 out of 5 star rating is actually a novella that is The Exile by Ryan Cahill now you kind of have to have read three other books to be able to read this one so again I'll keep it short but this story basically follows a character we come to know in book two of the series and it is just incredible because this book is like 150 pages and it spans over I don't know it was like 30 years or something so just the pure ambition of writing a novella that spans over so many years is crazy but I'm just blown away by how attached I felt to the protagonist of this novel there's just so many riveting and epic moments in this book it's just mind-blowing that Ryan Cahill is able to write such a epic and large story in 150 pages and while most of the books in the series are very very epic in scope this is very character focused on one of my favorite characters in the series it is just perfect it is beautifully written and it is just heartbreaking and just so good so yeah I really think that one of the greatest thing about the Bound and the Broken series is that almost every single book in the series just gets better and better I and mean, you, you can really see that Ryan Kyle's craft as a writer keeps improving so if you're looking for a traditional fantasy that feels modern in a lot of ways then definitely check out the Bound and the Broken series all right the next book is also another self-published book and I will keep this brief again because I talked about this book so ridiculously many times and you probably know what it is Illborn by Daniel T. Jackson one of my favorite ongoing series it is an incredibly character driven fantasy and it is just so so addictive we're basically set in a world where we follow four different POVs and these people start to develop magical abilities now I know that sounds quite generic but Daniel T. Jackson just has a way of writing characters and leaving you with so much intrigue that you just have to turn the pages and I know a lot of people have said this but it is true download the Kindle sample read the prologue just the prologue and I think that most of you will be absolutely hooked and the great thing is 
Book 2 in this chunky series is out now and it is just as good as Illborn which is mind blowing. So do yourself a favor, pick up Illborn, you won't regret it. Alright next up we kinda do have two books but I've grouped them together. But that is A Little Hatred and Wisdom of Crowds in the Age of Madness Trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. Now I love the first law trilogy. As you can see I have them behind me here but I would say that the Age of Madness is better in almost every single way. I think Abercrombie's ability to write characters is just taken to a whole nother level. The pacing is better and I've said this before in other videos but I just love love the fact that Abercrombie allows the world to actually progress into a more industrial area which we don't see that often. Most of the time we just see epic fantasy worlds just staying in the same place maybe because we have magic and we don't see a need for technology but in this book machines and like steam inventions are starting to pop up and that is having huge implications for society as a whole and we see a lot of class struggles and it is just brilliantly done. Everything that is good with the first law trilogy is in my opinion just improved here like I enjoyed the characters more, I thought the politics was brilliant and you have some absolutely insane moments in this series. Now this is a grim dark epic fantasy so it's not for the lighthearted and I would strongly recommend read the first law trilogy first before picking up this one but read that one then maybe also read some of the standalones and then pick up this series because at the age of madness is truly a masterpiece. Now you might have noticed that there aren't that many sci-fi books on this list but the next one is a sci-fi book and at the moment it is a book I am calling my favorite sci-fi book of all time and that is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. Now if you are a sci-fi not then maybe you're a bit surprised by this one but I'm not a huge sci-fi not but what is just so brilliant about this novel is again that the characters are at the heart of this novel and the science and the concept comes next which is really something I need to be able to enjoy sci-fi novels because usually if it becomes too concept driven I just find myself being bored and usually I don't connect with those novels but that is not an issue here and I think really Rocky which is a character in this novel is one of the best and most memorable fantasy characters I've ever come across and truly if you enjoy like Blake Crouch then this is a book you should also check out because this is also a page turner with fantastic characters. It is just beautiful written, it is witty, it's funny, it is mind bending. What I also really appreciate is that the conclusion is, is literally perfect. So this is a wonderful time, I would highly recommend it. And I've also read The Martian which is probably his more known work. But I truly think that Project Hail Mary is much much better in almost every way. So it's definitely a book worth checking out. Okay and next up again we do have three books that I'm grouping being together as one. That is the Greenbone Saga by Fonda Lee. I mean, how often have I talked about this series? Now, is Booktube overhyping this novel? Maybe, but I don't care. I gave every single book in this trilogy 5 out of 5 stars. And while I gave all of them 5 out of 5 stars, I think every single book in the series gets better and better. And Jade Legacy, which is my favorite book in this series, is literally one of the greatest fantasy conclusions I've ever read. Now, if you enjoy urban fantasy that is set in a more modern setting, if you enjoy a Asian inspired setting where clan wars and family are a big theme, and if you enjoy brilliant writing, riveting politics that spans over literally more than 10 years, then this is the novel for you. Really, the Greenbone Saga is the definition of fresh and modern fantasy. If you're looking for something different, something that isn't medieval, farm boy to hero kind of fantasy, then the Greenbone Saga is definitely gonna be that. It is truly a masterpiece and Fonda Lee's ability to write characters is unrivaled. But I think most of you have probably heard so much about this series that I'll just go on to the next book. <laughs> Alright and next up we have a novel that is criminally underrated and if you enjoy political fantasy then this is one of the best if not the best political fantasy I've ever read and that is The Counselor by E.J. Beaton. Now I read this around two years ago and I'm gonna say it again this is so criminally underrated. E.J. Beaton's characterizations is incredible I mean it's almost at the same level as Abercrombie but the politics and the scheming is so well done. Now this isn't a novel with full of action scenes and battles and so on. It is very very dialogue driven where you see a lot of leaders coming together and discussing the matters in this kingdom but it is just so so good. I love when fantasy has good politics and truly this is some of the best I've ever come across in the whole fantasy genre. Now we're still waiting for book two and I'm not sure if that's gonna happen but the good thing is that the counselor kind that reads like a standalone so please guys pick up this book I need more people to check it out all right this video is becoming very long the next book is a standalone and that is 
The Invisible Life of Eddie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. So this is actually the only V.E. Schwab book I read, but I just loved it. It basically follows a character that gets the blessing or curse, it depends on how you view it, of immortality. And we basically follow these two different plot lines. One is set in the 18th century and one is set in our times and it just works so well. And I thought that this was just so beautifully written and the analysis of immortality and, and what makes life meaningful and love and friendships is just beautifully done. And while I do agree that this book is a bit slow in places and the ending might be a bit predictable, I didn't care. I just thought it was so, so beautiful. And again, we don't read that often standalones in the fantasy genre. So the fact that there's a whole story in one book is also a major plus. So yeah, in my opinion, this was just so magical and I can't recommend it enough if you're looking for a standalone. All right, next up we have another standalone. How great is that? The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. Obviously, I had to include this book and this book is full of illustrations. I love this edition. Now, if you're looking for a book that has similar vibes as Narnia, where you're going to have that magical fairy tale vibe, but it is much more dark and it's written for adults, then this book is for you. Now this is set in the English countryside. We basically follow this young boy that returns to his childhood village or where he's from and he starts to get back some memories and we basically follow his journey as he recalls a lot of the events that happened in his childhood and all I will say here is that it gets quite dark but Neil Gaiman he just has an ability to write beautiful stories that makes you feel all cozy and it is just so so well done. Now, also I recently went to the theatre play of the ocean at the end of the lane and if you ever get the opportunity to go to that one, I can highly recommend it. It is absolutely incredible. But yeah, Neil Gaiman is a genius and this is without a doubt my favorite book I've read by him so far. All right, the next up we have another John Gwynn novel. Yes, I'm a huge John Gwynn fan and that is Ruin, which is book three in The Faithful and the Fallen. Now, I think that the whole quartet is brilliant, but really this book takes everything that was so good in the first two books and just brings it to a whole another level. And I think that really here we start to see that Gwynn is starting to mature as an author because there are some plot twists here that are absolutely phenomenal. There are some horrible and shocking plot twists and the pacing is just ruthless. Now similar to The Bound and Broken, if you enjoy like traditional fantasy that has that modern voice, then I really think that The Faithful and the Fallen is a series you need to check out. Now I said in, in the past that I think the malice is maybe a bit of a tough sell and the first 50% can be a bit hard to get into, but after you hit the 50% mark in malice, I think most of you will feel absolutely invested in this this series and Valor is even better than Malice and Ruin is the best book in the series in my opinion. This series has a lot of the tropes we love as fantasy nerds like we have a chosen one, we have great animal companions, we have epic wars and we have like supernatural beings and so on and so on. But really what makes this novel stand out from a lot of other traditional fantasy is the pacing. I mean the pacing is ruthless. It, I mean it's so ruthless that it, occasionally I wish it was almost slowed down a bit but it's just overly addictive and I can't recommend this series enough. <laughs> Alright and next up we have another standalone which is The Sword of Kaken by M.L. Wong which is probably the most talked about fantasy standalone on booktube so I'll keep it short but what I think is so unique about this novel is that the climax of this novel is at the 50% mark and then the other half of this book is really an analysis of grief and loss and the aftermath of war and conflict. If you enjoy a thorough analysis of such themes in a fantastical setting then this book is for you. Now also, The Sword of Kaken is set in a very unique world where most of the story takes place in a world that almost feels like the 18th century kind of setting. But we then also know that outside of this like secluded society, we have like modern technology. So it's a very unique and different blend. And again, it's a standalone. So you can just pick up this book, read it, and you will have a very, very satisfied beginning, middle, and conclusion. It is a must read if you love epic fantasy. All right, we only have three books left. <laughs> the next one is, I mean, I had to include a Wheel of Time book and I was debating it again and again, what is my favorite book? Because there are so many epic moments in this series, but they're scattered across a lot of books. But ultimately, I decided to choose The Great Hunt because I think that while Eye of the World is a good introduction, The Great Hunt is really where we start to see the series become its own thing, which I really, really appreciate. And the conclusion of this novel is just so iconic. If you read it, then you know that this novel ends on a, whoa, 
that was insane kind of moment. And we also started to see more of the world, which I just love. Now, I'm not gonna talk a lot about Wheel of Time. I recently made a video where me and my wife discussed the series for like 25 minutes or so. So if you're interested in our thoughts, definitely check out the video. Okay, we had to go down on memory lane for the next book, The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. Now, I've said in the past, and I still stand by it, that if I reread this book today, then I'm not sure if I would have given it a perfect 5 out of 5 star reading. This is truly one of the books that got me into fantasy as an adult. What I just found so overly addictive with this novel is that from the very first page, we're set in this world where ash is literally falling down from the heavens, and it is just so intriguing. Now, this book also has a wonderful underdog, and I'm a huge fan of underdogs. It has a group of misfits coming together to literally try and pull off the impossible. The challenge that is ahead of them is incredible, and rather surprisingly, this book ends in a way that I would never ever see coming. I actually expected the ending of this book to come at the end of the third book, but interestingly, we have a very, very epic and satisfying climax already in the first book. And truly, Elemency to this date is still my favorite magic system. So if you're looking to just get into fantasy, pick up The Final Empire. It is a perfect starting place. All right, and the last book on this list, man, this video is so long, but I had to include, and I don't own a physical copy, a book from my favorite series, The Dark Tower. And I truly think that the best book in that series is The Wastelands, which is kind of like a medieval kind of epic fantasy story. Now, the unique thing about The Dark Tower is that every single book in this series almost reads like a different genre kind of book. I mean, The Gunslinger starts with like a medieval kind of setting, and then we have like world hopping in book two, and then the third book is much more like epic fantasy, and it is just so, so good. I mean, I just love this series. I love all of the books. I think all of the books are good in their own ways, but since I'm a huge fantasy nut, I think that book three just spoke to me on a different level. And also, this series has Roland, which is one of the most iconic protagonists I've ever come across in the genre and it has Oi, which is one of the best animal pet companions. Now truly, if you are looking for something that is different from anything in the fantasy genre and I stand by that, it is one of the craziest and most creative and unique series, then check out The Dark Tower. Now the first book is probably the weakest in the series, but book two and three and so on, it just gets so crazy and overly addictive and it's truly the series that made me realize that fantasy is mo so much more than just a farm boy to hero or a chosen one or like wizard kind of series. It opened my eyes to how much the genre has to offer and I'm still so grateful that I picked up that series. So those are the 20 or 21 books or series I have on the list that I've all given 5 out of 5 stars. I can recommend all of them and I would love to hear your thoughts on my list and what are some of the books that you have read that you've given five out of five stars. I hope you enjoyed this very long video. Thank you so much for watching. See you next video. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. I hope you enjoyed this video and got some inspiration to read more books. Now, if you want to support me in any way, then you can check out my Patreon. I have different tiers and you will get different benefits depending on what tier you support. Some of the benefits include getting your name in my videos, voting rights on my next feed, getting a special role on my Discord server, getting access to one Patreon exclusive video a month, or even art cards and bookmarks signed by my wife and me. Most of the money it goes to hiring an editor to do a couple of videos for me a month, which basically allows me to post high quality content more frequently. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and God bless.